Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Wax on, wax off. Breathe in through nose. Out the mouth. Wax on, wax off. Don't forget to breathe. Very important. We're smart and my He told me enough. No, I Hey everyone, it's Don G. Corleone here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. Not really just a movie review, but actually an epic movie review. And that review is going to be for a film from 1984. And it's a sports film, a high school sports film. And this is actually one of my favorite films of the 80s. This is just an outright masterpiece in every way. And I really cannot wait to talk about this. And that film is going to be for none other than 1984's The Karate Kid. So what's this movie about? Well, a teenager named Daniel and his mother move from New Jersey to California. She has a wonderful new job, but Daniel quickly discovers that a dark-haired Italian boy with a Jersey accent doesn't fit into the blonde surfer crowd. And Daniel manages to talk his way out of some fights, but he is finally cornered by several who belong to the same karate school. As Daniel's passing out from the beating, he sees Miyagi, the elderly gardener, leaps into the fray and saves him from by outfighting half a dozen teenagers. Miyagi and Daniel soon find out the real motivator behind the boys' violent attitudes in the form of their karate teacher, John Kreese. And Miyagi promises to teach ja to teach Daniel karate and arranges a fight in the All Valley tournament some months off. And when his training begins, Daniel doesn't understand what he is being shown. Miyagi seems more interested in having Daniel paint fences and wax cars and teaching him karate. So, how is this film made? Well, The Karate Kid, believe it or not, guys, is actually a semi-autobiographical biographical story based on the life of screenwriter Robert Mark Kamen. At age 17, after the 1964 New York World's Fair, Kamen was beaten up by a gang of bullies. He thus began to study martial arts in order to defend himself. Kamen was unhappy with his first teacher who taught martial arts as a tool for violence and revenge, so he moved on to study ok Okaiwagan karate under a Japanese teacher who did not speak English, but had been a student of Chojo Miyagi. As Hollywood screenwriter, Kamen was mentored by Frank Price, who told, who told him that producer Jerry Wetter Tuff had optioned a news article about the young child of a single mother who had earned a black belt for defending himself against the neighborhood bullies. Kamen then combined his own life story with the news article and used both to create the screenplay for The Karate Kid. Additionally, given John G. F. Olsen's involvement with both films, Sylvester so Stallone often joked with Kevin that the writer ripped off the Rocky films with the Karate Kid. And DC Comics had a character called Karate Kid, and the filmmakers received special permission from DC Comics 1984 to use the title for the film and its sequels. Because the film spawned a franchise. And a number of actors were considered for the role of Daniel, including Sean Penn, Robert Downey Jr., Charlie Sheen, John Cryer, Neil Estevez, Nicholas Cage, Anthony Edwards C., Thomas Howell, Tom Cruise, Eric Stoltz, and D.B. Sweeney. And Ralph Macchio, and in the end, ended up being ultimately cast based on the strength of his performance as Johnny Cage in The Outsiders. Macchio stated that his performances as Johnny influenced the development of Daniel Russo in The Karate Kid. So, after the film was then shot and marketed, the Karate Kid would be theatrically released in the United States into theaters on June 22nd, 1984. When it came to the critical reactions, the film received mostly positive reviews from critics, many of whom praised the action sequences, writing themes, performances, and music. The film was also a commercial success at a gross over $130 million worldwide and became one of the highest grossing films in 1984 and Hollywood's biggest sleeper hit of the year. 
and the film revolutionized the acting career of Morita, who had previously been mostly known for comedic roles, and this earned him a nomination at the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. And the film subsequently launched a media franchise and was credited for popularizing karate in the United States. Now as for my reaction, guys, this is easily among the greatest films of 1984 and not and easily just one of the best high school movies of all time. And one of the best sports movies of all time. This film was always such an iconic masterpiece from start to finish and easily the best karate movie of all time. The premise of the film is simple, but it is almost impossible to explain the impact of the movie had on a certain young generation on its release. It was its run in the video market that made it a huge success it became, and so much of it has become part of pop culture, being its quotable lines and simple action. What made it stand out was that it clearly was the antithesis of all other martial arts movies of the time, which were in a boom period on video rental. But, but they were all muscle-bound and flying around at 100 mph, and the karate instead centers on peace, life philosophy, defense, and self-betterment. And the crux is a central partnership between the central pair of Mr. Miyagi and Daniel, which begins as teacher, monitoring pupil, but develops into a father and surgeon son relationship. And there are so many layers in the film. And the truth is that karate is really secondary to all. Any action is short, simple, and down to earth, and the real fights are for the soul, against bullies and personal defeat. For Mr. Miyagi, it is a re reawakening for him, and for Daniel, it is a journey of self discovery. The greatest part, easily, definitely would have to be the acting. You simply just can't take away from either of the two leads, and the chemistry between them is just perfect. Pat Moretta plays Mr. Miyagi almost effortlessly, but perfectly as a mentor to a young, insecure Daniel, who becomes, which becomes kind of a father and surrogate son relationship. And if anything, the relationship helped brings Mr. Miyagi out of his shell, because we... Because, for example, we see inside the soul of Mr. Miyagi and some of his inner tor torments, as such as the loss of his wife and child, and Daniel becomes closer to him for it. The plot is both creative and inspirational, you have almost phys and it will have you almost physically into it by the time the credits roll. And the acting, especially for Moretta, is very entertaining, providing both the driving inspirational force and the subtle touches of comedy thrown in, and the music positively adds the experience. As Bill Conti, this Bill Conti's tunes, was just also the same guy who scored Rocky, will draw out each emotion to its full potential for every scene. And obviously, for those who haven't seen the movie, it tells a story of a kid named Daniel Russo. He moves with his mother to LA to start a new life. But unfortunately for Daniel, his soon-to-be new life goes downhill the minute he enters Los Angeles. Because he soon falls foul of the local bullies, What's even more fortunate is that the bullies happen to be karate experts, and they proceed to practice their moves on the new kid in town. And Daniel then meets handyman Mr. Miyagi, played to perfection by Pat Morita, and Miyagi helps Daniel overcome the bullies by teaching him the true art of karate, and it's a very exciting, heartwarming story that eventually develops. And since this is directed by John D John G. Adelson, the movie is just much a story about an Allison teenager searching for a father figure, as it is a film about karate. Think of it not as a karate movie, and more of a movie that happens to have karate in it. The chop the action plays second fiddle, here just as the boxing did in Rocky, the movie also directed by John V. John G. Adelson. In fact, the actual martial arts actually equates to about 20% of the movie's actual runtime. It was just about 2 hours and 6 minutes, and the film is not overly long because it's driven by strong character development. Everyone involved puts in a stellar performance, Rita Machio in particular is superb, watching their friendship blossom as they work to achieve their goal in deeply setting, I mean as deeply moving, <laughs> sorry guys, can't speak clearly. This is because in a way they both need each other. Daniel's a boy without a father, Maggie's a father who lost his child and wife, and because of this moving subplot, the payoff at the end is all the more enjoyable as they achieve victory together, and John G. Adelson surely knows how to rouse the, po rouse the spirit. And the movie is elevated by Bill Connie's fantastic score. And choosing him was the right choice, because as it was choosing John G. Adelson to direct. Connie's work on Rocky shows here as yet again he creates a score that definitely raises the spirit and gets the audience punching the air when Daniel Santa ministers that final blow. And the movie's soundtrack is a peach packed full of 80s classics to help stir up the nostalgia. When it comes to other performances, I do like some of the other actors in this film. Elizabeth Shue plays Ali, Daniel's love interest, and apart from Mr. Miyagi, the when we for when Daniel starts his life in Los Angeles, she ends up being the only friend he's got because at first we seems like 
He meets this other neighbor, this other neighbor kid. At first, it seems like they're going to already become friends. But one, then we get to the beach party, and things go smooth. Then at the beach party, though, Johnny and his gang see Daniel and Allie playing their soccer ball. And things just go, and we all know the, that fight happens, and things just go downhill. And then, and then Daniel's pretty much an outcast because he loses a fight. And now he's then the only, before being trained by Mr. Miyagi, Ali ends up being the only friend he ends up having for most of the film. Then you got William Zapka, who also stars as the bully Johnny Lawrence, the lead bully of the game, who is honestly a flawed character. He, like, you can tell he likes his buddies. He's not like the generic abusive leader who gets annoyed by his cronies. Like You can tell he actually does enjoy his pals in his game. And plus, technically speaking, they're not just generic bullies. They're bullies that are actually brainwashed by this, their nasty karate and abusive instructor named Kreese, who's played by Martin Cove. And his performance at, his, his performance as Kreese here definitely definitely makes him one of the best villains of the 80s. And Miyagi like even said kind of summarizes their characters best. There's no such thing as bad student, there's only a bad teacher. And that really shows in this movie. Like you can tell there, you can easily tell that that whole bully gang is actually scared of Kreese when they're doing training with him a lot of times. And even when they're picking on any students, it's because, and they can't go mer have mercy on them. It's because they know if they even have mercy, Kreese will likely be furious. And the and Kreese will not let them show any mercy. This movie is even packed full of moments in dialogue they are definitely now embedded into pop culture. Even never seen the film, the phrase wax on, wax off is definitely going to be familiar. <clears throat> and Pamarada, Mr. Miyagi, Pamarada as Mr. Miyagi is great. And the way he teaches to cry through everyday works, tasks for Daniel was a nice touch of comedy. The original thinking on the writer's part. And several scenes like trying to catch a fly with chopsticks or breaking the next of beer bottles with a karate chop. Not only make you smile, but go a long way to fixing Mr. Miyagi as some ancient martial arts master. Him and Daniel easily have some of the best film chemistries in cinema. Their scenes are easily a blast to watch. And I like, and I always like seeing them on screen. In this movie, a lot more than I kind of did with Daniel and Ali. Because I feel like him and Miss, Daniel and Mr. Miyagi get a better developed chemistry. Most of the time. And, and Daniel's relationship with his mom is actually, is actually also good. They don't give you much info about his father until, well, the only info we got about his dad is, I saw a bit of part two on TV, and it was a scene where where they bring up his dad passed away. Hey, so, it's all I know about part two, guys. The only one original I've, of the originals I've seen was the first. So, in this movie, it's just Daniel and his mom, Lucille. She's kind of your classic, middle-aged, annoying mother, constantly embarrassing Daniel. She has no clue that Daniel's been getting beat the crap out of through a good portion of the movie. Because Daniel says he fell off his bike. Or the morning after the beach party fight, he usually is about to exit the apartment with sunglasses on to hide his black eye. As well. And even throws a fifth, claiming that both times he fell off his bike were the other encounter was, well, aside from the soccer tryouts moments. It's when Daniel's biking home, and Johnny is getting to see him on his bike, and they cross him to fall off his bike and crash. Those moments. And one particular scene is when he and her get in an argument in the parking lot outside their apartment. It's definitely one to remember. Hate this stupid bike. Damn bike. I hate it. And Daniel, why'd you throw your bike away? Because they fell like him off. That's the that's the scene that happens after the after the bike incident. It happens after he falls off his bike. And yeah, not. And Allie's not like the only friend, not just the only friend Daniel has, but it also ends up kind of turning into a bit of a love story with Daniel and Allie. The girl he meets at the beach party on this first day in town that where that fight happens. And he soon finds out they have many differences because she's a rich country club girl and she's also the ex-girlfriend of Johnny, who's the main bully in this film. Nevertheless, it doesn't stop the burning flame. I like how the main character isn't your ideal lead, especially in a sports film. 
Daniel Russo is a lanky and unwealthy teenager. He has no father, rough origins that are exempt. Exasperated by bullying when he leaves Newmark for California, he befriends a maintenance guy at his residence who eventually teaches him karate and becomes a role model and a father figure in his life. And he's someone that people can easily relate to, especially when throwing his complicated love life. And the karate kid, karate kid not only acknowledges the necessity of a guidance, it turns the guidance to a friendship and creates in Mr. Miyagi not just a father friend figure but a man with the past, one that offers and acknowledges the sacrifices and heroism of many Japanese Americans, a present which is the movie and a bright future incarnated by Daniel's final triumph, not only himself or some demons, but the film is beyond these cliches. And Daniel has the right spirit from the start. He stays respectful to Mr. Miyagi. His romance with Ali doesn't fall into sentimental contrivance and together. They have terrific chemistry, so the real victory is about not letting the adversary take the best of you. And that's kind of what finding the balance is. Being someone to be being something to be proud of and earning self-respect. So technically before the com competition, Daniels just kind of won everything. The tournament was simply the record to settle between two schools of karate, the good one and the Cobra Kai incarnated by the merciless Vietnam. Vietnam Vets, Crease. <laughs> All right, guys. When it comes to the villain, John... And another thing about Daniel is, unlike a lot of sports movies where today, where the protagonist is kind of just comes off as a prick, that's not the case here. It's not like in the 2010 remake at all. No, not it's not like the Kung Fu Kid remake from 2010. No, that this protagonist is actually a flawed protagonist who's likable. You actually enjoy watching. You enjoy his story arc. Much like much like how it is with the Rocky films. When it comes to the villain Johnny, I like how conflicted he is. He's done so much better than characters such as especially it's definitely one of the, a better douchebag done right compared to characters like Kylo Ren. You can definitely see how conflicted he often is. He's often a bully, clearly, because he's trained by Kreis to be one. Kreis technically is the real antagonist of the story, while Johnny and his gang are kind of just as slave students. Even they clearly don't like Kreis' methods, because during the Halloween scene, it's during the Halloween alley fight, one of Johnny's friends tries to say that they should stop bullying Daniel, but Johnny clearly isn't going to do that because he knows their master never lets them show mercy for their rivals. And even during... And then, and that's when Mr. Miyagi shows up and beats the crap out of them. And then you find out that Miyagi knows karate and he rescues Daniel. And even during the final fight, Bobby Brown is one of Kreese's more compassionate students and the least vicious of Daniel's tormentors. Kreese tells Bobby to disable Daniel with an illegal attack to the knee. Then Bobby's like, I can't do that, I'll be disqualified. And Kreese is like, no, do it. I want him broken. And so Bobby reluctantly does so and severely injures Daniel and it gets him disqualified. And Bobby even literally tries to apologize to Daniel when he does that move. You can tell he didn't want to do that idea. And you can, you can clearly tell that he wanted the game to stop bullying Daniel during the hell at certain times. But he clearly didn't like what Johnny was doing a lot of times and, and clearly didn't really want much part of it. But he knew that, but he clearly knew Crease. Didn't, wouldn't allow that and stuff, and wouldn't allow any mercy, so he's kind of reluctantly forced to kind of go along with a lot of this stuff. And I do love how the finale goes, where after Bobby injures Daniel, Daniel's taken to the locker room, where the physician determines he cannot continue, but he believes that if he quits, his tormentors will have gotten the best of him. So he continues, convinces Miyagi to use a pain submersion technique to help him continue. And Daniel's able to return to fight as Johnny is about to be declared the winner by default, and the match is a seesaw battle with neither able to break through the other's defense. And the match is halted when Daniel uses a scissor leg technique to trip Donnie, delivering a blow to the back of his head and giving Johnny a nosebleed. And Chris directs Johnny to sweep Daniel's injured leg, an unethical move, and Johnny looks horrified at the order but reluctantly agrees because he's now starting to see who Chris really is. He's kind of starting to see what a monster Chris actually is made, turning him out to be. And the match resumes and the score is tied 2-2. Two two. Johnny seizes Daniel's legs and deals a vicious elbow, doing further damage. And Daniel, standing with difficulty, assumes the crane stance, a, technically, a technique he observed Mr. Miyagi performing on a beach. And Johnny lunges towards Daniel, who jumps and executes a front kick to Johnny's face, scoring the winning point and becoming the new champion. And so, Johnny then this causes Johnny to actually gain a newfound respect for his nemesis, 
And he presents the trophy to Daniel himself. An enthusiastic crowd carries Daniel while Miyagi looks on proudly. And it's a perfect way to end the movie. Sadly, though, that was not the case. Because, because this movie made profit, let's make sequels! We know how that turned out. They get worse. And I've only seen the first one, and somebody tells me I'm going to have to review the sequels. At some point. Which I will likely do. Reviews for the sequels are going to eventually happen. I know part two is a fan favorite among some YouTubers I watch, but... We'll see how my opinion goes. Because I've read things about the sequel, and there's some things I already don't like. Now, though, and, um, oh, yeah, if you're going to ask me about that Cobra Kai show, are you going to watch Cobra Kai? No. And do you want to know why? Because with Cobra Kai, I've literally heard they literally made Daniel LaRusso another Jake Skywalker a lot of times. So as soon as I found out, as soon as I found that part out, I was like, no, I'm not watching that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to watch another character get turned into a villain protagonist like they did with Luke in The Last Jedi. I'm not going to see that happen. I don't want that to happen. I could care less what people say about Cobra Kai. I'm not watching it. But back to this review. Is there a problem I have with the movie? I've got maybe one problem. Allie the love interest. Okay, Allie's a fine character, but I feel like she just doesn't have much development as a character. Although her and Daniel's scenes together are nice to watch because their scenes just. Their romance scenes feel believable. They're not overly corny like a lot of romance chemistry in films today. She just doesn't have too many scenes to really. For me to really be overly attached to as a character. It's kind of just love interest, but there's, her and Daniel's scenes are actually nice to watch. I will admit that. So that problem doesn't bug me at all, because I still find The Karate Kid to be a phenomenal masterpiece of the 80s. So in the end, The Karate Kid is worth a watch and buy for karate fans, high school 80s movie fans, and sports film fans in general. It is always a masterpiece that always holds up and is always going to be one to this very day. Anyways, that's it for my view of The Karate Kid. In order to how I'm going to rate The Karate Kid, here's how I'm going to rate this movie. So overall, if you love sports films and karate in general, The Karate Kid is totally your go-to movie for that kind of stuff, and it's always going to be an 80s masterpiece that never gets old. And if you're wondering how to rank The Karate Kid 1984, I'm going to give The Karate Kid a damn 10 out of 10. There we go. That was my review for The Karate Kid. And so, tomorrow night, so tonight, I'm going to be going to see The Equalizer 3. I cannot wait for that. I know technically this review was filmed yesterday, but this it's already premiering on YouTube today, this morning. So, just keep that in mind. I'm seeing the Thursday Night Cruise of Equalizer 3. And then this week, I'm going to review the Equalizer films. I'm excited to do that. <coughs> Sorry. But I should end this video now. So, till then, that'll be it for this review. Thank you all for watching. If you like this and want to see more, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Don G. Corleone. <laughs>